59. It's lost its bits. Its chimney's gone. I mean, I found it, but it's an unfinished kit. <laughs> Need some super glue. Owen's back up with his impressions. He's trying to beat Owen the incline again. There he is. <laughs> no, don't do it! So, we have come to Corfe Castle to scout out locations to film the new LSWR T3. Well, it's not the new one, but the newly steamed T3, which will be returning to traffic next week. Well, so it's been staying in mind anyway, we thought we'd go and see the U-boat, which is currently running today. <laughs> did they have to whistle right next to us? No! Did they? Yes! Did it make me jump? <laughs> To the mine. It's not mine, but someone owned it at one point. Oh, I know that. It's Jack. I've met him. I always concerned when you walk on these floors, you can just see like daylight down below. It's like ah, don't realise you're raised up. Where are we? Surprising that. <laughs> Who'd have thought? They've got Dolgok here. What? That didn't happen. <laughs> Is that really? Yeah, it's all gone. It's changed a lot though, isn't it? The site just looks so different. There's a truck hoist. Into there. Into the Nagy Dragon set at the bottom. You called it tiny. Because <laughs> it's tiny. I'd imagine so. Down we go. This is why they said dogs on leads. Oh no! <laughs> I'm not made for mining! <laughs> These pools are too clean! I wonder how far this still goes now. So Russell, the engine that's now at the Welsh Highland Heritage Railway, uh, used to work here at Norden or Fursbrook Sidings with the clay mines. And it's just so strange, like, obviously you can tell that there's like a big narrow gauge influence here. But Russell is such a big tank engine. It was down here for ages. It's very strange. Something I love on old LSWR routes is they'll just paint over the other letters and just have it SR for Southern Railway. Train agrees. Who upset my man Harmon? Tiny little turntable. Oh no, we're in the wrong country. Uh, quick, head somewhere else. <laughs> right. <laughs> I go sailing. Do 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 do.
Yeah, they're hardly skyscrapers. Like the skies up there. Copied and pasted my ships too many times. They're everywhere. <laughs> oh no, my car! Such a boy to jump. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. Okay. You're worrying me a bit. <laughs> Not much railway things to film in Palma de Mallorca, but there's this one little bit <laughs> of tram line down by the, the docks. And that's the place to be. There you go, guide rail done. <laughs> Hello, Portuguese train. What's your name? Interesting couplings. They're like partially screwlink and partially not. I mean, they are screwlink, but they look different. Oh, they got a handbrake like the Public Express. Just shut that then. That be shut. It didn't click. I don't like that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, train. You lie, you said there was free Wi Fi. There was not. <laughs> but it's loco hall, so I'll take that. Look! Oldie trainees. We like those ones. Please don't blow the horn, that was so loud. Thank you. <laughs> it's also in the Wild West. It's so like dry and barren, like summer. But there's some happy engines. Yeehaw. We are on our way to the Museo Nacional Ferroviario, which I'm sure you'll be able to translate as the National Railway Museum of Portugal. I'm very excited. I know nothing about Portuguese trains, so today is the day. I'm so glad we were able to make it here because uh, don't really know Portuguese. Can just about passably speak Spanish, and we've been trying to do that today because we're like, well, it's it's next to it, isn't it? So, maybe they'll know Spanish better than English, but it seems a lot of people know English anyway. We're like those typical tourists that, like, you know, we'll say something to them in Spanish or Portuguese, and they'll just reply in straight up English, just knowing where we've come from. I'm sorry, we're not really good at ac accents, we're not really good at languages in, in England, are we? We made it to the museum. Whoa! I, d I didn't cue that, that was, just, that was by chance. We don't know why it's so dark. <laughs> I can't see. Anyway, tip for anyone if you're wanting to come here. Come by train, you get a 50% discount on the tickets apparently. Stevenson's Rocket, I know that one. That's not Stevenson. Ah, vapor. Steam. Various tools. Ooh, I love that. Oh, it's a miniature boiler, but it's still huge. That's really fun. It's a naked steam engine. <laughs> Don't look. Lilliput. The toy locomotive. The toy locomotive, is that what it means? Oh! It was a gift from the King of France to the Portuguese royal family. Oh, wow. Allowing the princess to play with this modern technology. So this was a toy. <laughs> it's just a play thing. That's insane. This wasn't in Toy Story. I love that. That's really sweet. It's so early on. Surely one of the first miniature steam engines. Oh, that's a nice close up of the brake valve as well. Don't usually see it sort of just disconnected. Modelers, take note. Ooh, I'm blinded by the light. Do, 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 do. Just one cornetta. I speak quietly in museums, I don't want to offend anyone and ruin their experience by making cringy jokes. Hello, handsome. You are lovely. Wow. Number 1501. 
Oh, look at that. As I say, I don't know much about like Portuguese steam, but this is stylish. A lot of brass work to polish. <laughs> My goodness. Wow, that is that is a lovely design. You're nice too, but not as glamorous. <laughs> Sorry, Trevor's Portuguese cousin. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to touch this or not, because there's a handle here. Can I touch it? I'm going to touch it. Oops. Not going to touch anymore. Oh goodness me, that looks like a monster. Here's our monster. This is our Tale of the Brave. It's a track lighting vehicle. Uh, you know, that makes sense. It does look like a glorified wet floor sign, but... <laughs> We like! Look at this wheel! This is different to anything I've seen before. Usually you have like a very straight axle and you have the bitty bits going off of that, but this one has got a curved axle and then they go in a rotation like that. Like imagine this going at speed, that centre bit. Whoa! Also these wheels are just huge in general. Wow! This huge roundhouse. So the guide was just telling us this is actually a replica. This was built in 2008. The first one was demolished in the late 70s. But that's dedication of the team we work at. Like they built a replica of the roundhouse. What a chunk. Ooh, look at that. Sorry, I'm nerding out a little bit. This might be the biggest tank engine I've ever seen. <laughs> that's massive. The sidebox looks so much like a fairly. That's narrow gauge. <laughs> That's massive. Just got to take a moment to appreciate how they're all just lined up. This makes me quite happy. I've just realized I don't think they've got the same standard gauge as us. That explains a lot. They've got bigger tracks, so their engines are bigger. What a hive of activity this would have been back in the age of steam. How loud it would have been. It's very much like a Tidman's Sheds scenario here, but like all the engines are so close together. But like, you know, preparing them in the morning, goodness me. Must have been loud and very compact. And they've got a little pocket for the brake pipe. Oh, tiny, 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 tiny buffers for this thing. Oh, they have one of these. Is it Lucille, the one on the North Yorkshire Moors? Like a Belgian tram? Is this from Belgium? It is. I know trams. It's so hot, even the guards owl has died. <laughs> that thing is scary. Tiny little cabs for tiny little engines. These look like a hell of fun. They make the frame so wavy. Look at this. It's just whoop -de -doop -de -doop. As hot as it is in this museum, please excuse me. I'm genuinely just geeking out walking around. I don't actually know any of the engines in the collection here. I didn't know what to expect. Enjoying it live, basically. The guide at the entrance said this is the eldest engine. Hello, eldest engine. Greetings. Got a very long number. 1857 this was built. Big driving wheel in the centre. And I've never seen a cab design like that. I don't know if it's coming out too well on the light, but... You've got the dome, and you've got a tiny little spectacle in front. And then the cab roof, you've got this like really ornate design at the top. <laughs> like it's sort of a veranda. What looks like an electric light in the middle? Which they did not have in 1857. And other than that, yes, a very bare looking cab. But a very, very spacious one to be fair. Considering especially in the 1850s, a lot of the priorities were still on building tender engines. Pioneering days of steam. To have a tank engine like this is actually an impressive design for like back then. Also this. What is this? It's like all springy. It's on a it's on a screw. I don't know what this is at all. Someone in the comments, let me know. Because I can't ask the tour guide in Portuguese, so I won't find out until I upload the video. What a brute. And I'm glad I came down this way. Because there's another little engine hidden back here. Hello. 
I keep saying hello to them and they're not answering back, but... Also built in 1918, because that makes this the exact same age as Douglas on the Talus Lynn, and Duncan on the Scar I, I don't understand why there's such a massive gap in this one. But look at this! The boiler's up there, and then the frames are just hollow. Oh, here's another one of those wheels where it, like, it turns like that. I feel like they have another engine and it's currently missing. <laughs> you could like have a whole bed just sitting on the front of the footplate there. There's so much room. Horario the pigeon everyone. It's poor engine's buffers. Needs a manicure. Look at that. It's Trapezzo! Oh cute! Or oh, Trapello? Is that an L or a Z? Oh. I read it as Z as well. A little bit. Oh, it's a little, little bit of a Trapezzo sounded cute. And they've got a very proud tanker over there, just sort of sitting right in the centre. Where are you from, little guy? It is Trapello. Oh, it's an Austin and Koppel. In German. Many of these little industrial engines. But you're still special to me. Continuing on the theme that this just feels like a virtual game, where you just build a miniature railway. They keep the engine just in this little glass cabinet <laughs> and the whole train. And then the railway just comes out and goes straight around. That's so strange. Look at its little shed. That's cute. Cram. Oi. Traffic jam. Traffic jam. They climb the hill so easily, they're like goats. Here we observe a British tourist trying to understand the local map. Where are we? <laughs> we were so hot and bothered yesterday, we looked into the distance in the haze and we saw that just behind the crane. We thought, it looks like Rio. We're lost in Rio. And then slightly to the right, you've got the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> Where are we? Hello my dear friends, if you've enjoyed this video wandering around trains in the south of England and the south of Portugal, then you might also like to know that there is a hugely extended cut of this video exclusive to my channel patrons. If you follow the link in the description, you can join and support the future videos that I make, and that's very nice of you if you choose to do so. If not, then just carry on, you do you. Many thanks to my brilliant channel patrons. Alex Goodman, GBH Train, D0280 Falcon, Sean Tempest, Random Thomas Fan, Ego, Dark White 73, and Andrew Dyack.